Hello everyone and welcome to this quick tutorial where we're going to see how to make a simple mini-map for a 3D scene in God of War and C-Sharp. Before jumping into the tutorial, I want to thank V44N7, whose comment actually inspired this video. So if you two have some neat color concepts that you'd like me to do a tutorial on, feel free to suggest one by dropping a comment down below. Okay, so by the end of the video, you'll know how to use a second camera 3D node in one of your 3D scenes to film the level from a specific angle, and how to use Godot's viewport tools to repaste the view of this camera on the screen in a particular spot. Note that in this tutorial, I'm going to start from the little dungeon kind of level that we made in this previous video of the series, where we discussed how to attach a 3D camera to a hero in an RPG-like fashion without any wall clipping or collisions. So as usual, don't forget that if you want to get the files of this startup tutorial or the one that we'll work on today directly, you can have a look at the GitHub repo with all my Godot tutorials over here. Also, since we'll be coding in C-Sharp, make sure that you're using a version of Godot with .NET enabled. And just before diving into this 3D stuff, let's talk 2D for just 2 seconds. If you want to learn more about 2D tools for your future Godot for C-Sharp projects, then go ahead and check out my brand new short read ebook, Love Mana Mini 2D Platformer. This quick, practical guide will teach you the fundamentals of doing 2D games in this game engine, with essential notions like tile maps, 2D physics, animations, character controllers, and more. You'll even see how to build your very own 2D platformer game step by step. So if you want to discover some 2D tricks for your next God of War C-Sharp game in just about 100 pages and for a low price, don't hesitate to have a look at the Gumroad page. But anyway, with all that said, let's dive in and discover how to set up a basic minimap for a 3D scene in Godot and C-Sharp. Alright, to begin with, we need to talk about how to use several cameras at the same time in a Godot scene. Cause if we're able to stack multiple camera renders on the same screen, then we're able to put our main character focus view in the middle, and a top view for our minimap in a corner of the screen. But of course, if we just add a second camera 3D node in our scene, have it point down at the level, and change its mode to orthographic, which looks just great in the preview, then when we run the game, we don't see it anymore. That's because we can't just auto-render multiple cameras on our screen just by adding them to the hierarchy. In fact, we need to use a neat Godot tool called the Viewport. In short, a Viewport is a screen that you can project a render on. By default, any Godot scene contains the root Viewport that is used by your active camera. Typically, in our case, our player-focused main camera is the active one, so it's automatically rendered on this root Viewport that takes up the whole size of your computer screen. But the trick is that if we create a second Viewport, then put another camera in this other viewport, we'll be able to render it at the same time and get our double view of the scene. Though, just a quick note, it's important to remember that you can always have only one active camera per viewport and that your camera will always render to the closest viewport in the hierarchy. In our case, let's say that we create a sub viewport node in our hierarchy to create a secondary viewport and then we put a new minimap camera inside it. From that point on, we have two viewports. The default root viewport, that our main player camera renders to, and this sub-viewport, that our minimap camera renders to. However, for now, this second viewport is still not shown on screen. Our minimap camera does render somewhere, but we can't actually see the result. To fix this, we need to wrap our sub-viewport sub-hierarchy into a sub-viewport container UI node. This allows us to get back the content of the sub-viewport child inside, so the render of the camera node in this sub-hierarchy, and then displayed on the screen as a simple interface element. So for example, we can put our sub-viewport container in the bottom right corner of the interface, Enable the stretch option to have the sub-viewport inside auto-resize to fit this UI size, and then set some custom dimensions for our container. And there we are! 
If we replay our game, we see that we now have this additional render of our scene that comes from our top-down minimap camera and that indeed updates in real time as the level state changes. Okay, that's pretty cool. So now let's see some extra tips to improve this minimap even further. Given that here we're working on a little RPG-like demo, where our hero is clearly the whole focus of the game, it could be cool to have our minimap feature follow this rule, and to so have it follow the player at all times. Except that this time we can't use the same trick as we did in our previous episode, where we just parented the main camera to the player to have it inherit its transform. Cause in this case, our setup requires that our camera be extracted to another viewport. This means that we need to code this follow logic ourselves, which luckily isn't too hard. So let's just attach a new C-sharp script on our minimap camera, call it minimapcamera.cs, and inside, export a reference to a node 3D to use as a target. After rebuilding our project, we can assign our player node in this reference slot. Now back in our script, in the ready function, we can store the current offset between the minimap camera and its target, because this will make it easier to keep this exact offset afterwards when we track our target. Of course, if you want, you can also start by checking that a target was indeed assigned, or else print a little error and exit early. Then all that's left to do is, in the process method, continuously reassign our camera's position relative to the target's position and using our offset vector. And here we go! The minimap now stays hooked to our player avatar and moves along with it. Another cool idea could be to make this minimap display slightly more appealing, because for now it looks really dull to just have this extra rectangle on the screen. To do this, we can start by putting everything in a margin container that stretches to the whole screen to add some padding in the bottom right corner. Then we can use a panel container to better customize our minimap. In the transform options, we'll start by shrinking it to the corner, and then in its theme override section, we'll give it a custom flat style. Here we can, for example, increase the content margins a bit to create a small border around our minimap render, change the fill color to get something more readable on the background, and even play with the rounded corners or the shadow options to further boost the contrast between this extra element and the base render. Okay, so that's already way better. But now you might be wondering, what if I don't want to show all these details on my minimap? What if I want to have a more abstract view in this top view version? To have our main camera and our minimap camera render slightly different versions of our assets, we can reuse a pair of tools that we discussed a while ago in the series in this episode, the visibility layers and the curling masks. In a nutshell, those are a way of telling Godot's camera to only render some objects if the curling mask of the camera matches the visibility layers of the object. In our case, we can use this trick to prepare two alternate representations of our objects, the one we currently have for the main camera, with nice 3D models and all, and another more minimalist one for the minimap camera. Then, just by putting those various elements on different visibility layers and making sure that all two cameras have different scanning masks, we'll be able to render each representation in just either one of the two viewports. Typically, suppose that we create a sprite 3D in our player hierarchy with a simple circle texture and then we put it on the visibility layer number 2. We'll also make sure to remove this second layer from our main camera's curling mask. Then, back in the main demo scene, we'll select our minimap camera and tell it to not render the first layer, but keep the second one. Now, if we run the game again, we see that we indeed have only our player on the minimap, shown as a little black dot. Meaning that if we do something similar for other assets, such as the platform, the environment blocks, the chests, the barrels, etc., we'll be able to easily choose the visuals that we want to show on our minimap and possibly get a simpler visual than if we were just refilming the exact same scene. If we want, we can even give our player avatar a simple view angle visual to quickly see what direction it's currently facing. 
So there you go. You now know how to set up a simple minimap system for 3D scene, thanks to Godot's viewport tools, how to have the camera follow the player, and even how to use visibility layers and culling to customize the render of the minimap to your liking. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to like it and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones. It always helps when you join the community and you show your support. And of course, don't hesitate to drop a comment with ideas of good tricks that you'd like to learn. As always, thanks a lot for watching and take care.